Now let's start off looking at this source in a moment, and I'd refer you to open up your OneNote at the activity we've done this week, where you've got a blank map and a table. Now a lot of the information that you need to know for this table is going to come up in this source. So let's have a look at this secondary source, which is a map of Europe as it was in the early days of 1914. Now, when we're looking at a map, let's make a point of taking into account not just the locations on the map, but the key of the map. So the first thing that this map names is neutral countries, countries that don't take a side in the war. They're in a light yellow shade. We can put them to one side. It's interesting that this map marks Belgium as one of the Allied powers at the start of the war. And there's a bit of a story about that. We could actually discuss this later on. And it's important to realise that Belgium could have been shaded right at the start of the war as a yellow. Belgium at the start of the war was a neutral country. But it's very important that we know the big powers at the start of the war. And in the dark green, we've got the United Kingdom, we've got France, and we have Russia. And these are the countries that we refer to as the Triple Entente, and that should be in your table. Their capitals, of course, are London, Paris, and St. Petersburg in Russia. In the center of Europe, in the center of the map, we've got two empires. We've got the German Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Austria-Hungary, the Habsburg Empire, all same names for the same place. They become known as the Central Powers. Now, the Central Powers have an allied country with them that we today refer to as Turkey, but at the time is the Ottoman Empire. Now, the Ottoman Empire is on either side of a stretch of water referred to as the Dardanelles and the Bosphorus. We also have, worth noting, Italy in a light green that joins with France, the United Kingdom, Britain, and Russia to fight the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Germans later in the war. So you can see the split of this European war playing out now. Think about what you need to remember. Make a couple of notes. Think about what you need to find out still for your table in the classwork. There are some pieces of information that we can start filling in, some pieces of information we should have already filled in, and some that perhaps we need to still find out the answers for. At this point, I'd like to think you are aware of what an alliance is, and you know the names and locations of the countries in the Triple Entente, and the names and locations of countries who are part of the Central Powers. It's also worth knowing who joins with them later in the war. At one point in class, we've already spoken about the meaning of Entente, and I think it's important for you to note down that Entente is a French word that essentially means agreement. Let's now explore these three countries together and how they saw themselves as closely related. Let's have a look at a primary source. This primary source is a Russian poster from 1914. So let's have a look at the information that is given to you to start off with. It's a Russian poster, 1914. We don't have too much else in it. If you look across the base, the information is written in Russian. Even the caption at the top is written in Russian. Now take a moment in your OneNote where this source is provided for you and write on it. Scribble on it. Try to identify what's going on. What's happening in the background? Do you recognise any of the symbols? Do you recognise what's in the air? Is there anything in here that might help you to recognise who's being depicted? Don't forget to use the caption. The caption itself tells you it's Russian, and we know Russia is part of the Triple Entente. And we've got this word at the top, which is very important, is explained over in the caption, where it says, Concord. What can you figure out before we do anything else? See what you can write down. All right, let's deconstruct it for you. Firstly, the title in Russian, Concord can be translated to mean 
agreement or entente. So we've got war as the background, we've got three figures in the front, concord is a synonym for agreement or entente. Is it possible to identify now who each of these three figures might represent? France is identified for us. Perhaps you got France from looking at the red, the white, and the blue. This figure represents France. If we could speak Russian, we'd see some clues written down underneath where that character is labelled. Hopefully now you're thinking, I wonder who the other two characters are. Can you identify this character? Perhaps this one. Let's now explore it further. Russia. Russia is identified. One way you might do that is by looking at the Russian Orthodox cross. It's not a normal Christian symbol. There are close ties between the Russian Orthodox Church and the Russian Tsar, the Russian Emperor. So this is a clue to historians as to who this character would be. But obviously at the bottom, we have Russia. That should narrow it down for you for our final character, Britain. Let's take it a little bit further. Maybe there's some more clues that we should look at. We've spoken about the Russian Orthodox cross. I wonder why this character is holding this symbol. I wonder why this character is holding this symbol. So let's look at it a bit further. The cross represents faith. So we've got Russia holding on to faith. Often, hearts represent something. I wonder what that might represent. An anchor traditionally represents hope. Anchors also reference navies, ships, and Britain was known as having the largest navy in 1914. So we've got Russia holding a cross representing faith, Britain holding an anchor representing hope and the navy. Is that heart idea starting to become a little bit more clear to you yet? Often hearts represent love. Now an interesting idea here is if France is holding love. In 1914, a famous cathedral in France and Paris, the Sacred Heart Cathedral, was opened. So now we have three countries, the Triple Entente, represented by faith, hope and love. And you might be aware they are three of the biblical virtues. Perhaps the meaning is now coming through that in a time of war, three great and virtuous nations have joined together to fight against evil. The virtues of faith, hope, love are coming together to fight the evil that is the central powers. Think about the cleverness underpinning this imagery. This poster was created for a reason. Given it's written in Russian, who would it be written for? For what purpose? It's always important to look at the motives for sources and think about why people created these sources. What are they hoping to achieve? So take a moment now to think about the motives of who produced this source. What might they have been trying to do when they created this poster? What reaction are they hoping from the audience that might be very different to our hope now? I hope you wrote something down then, because that's what we do in a flip video. Perhaps you wrote down something along the lines of the Russian creator of this poster in 1914 was trying to reinforce in the minds of Russian audiences that the alliance that Russia is in is a force for good in the world, that they are standing up to evil in a time of war. Perhaps this poster is to encourage the Russian people, to assure them that they are on the right side, and that this isn't just a war over a trivial issue. It is, in fact, a war between good and evil. And Russia is a leader in the forces of evil. Oh, in the forces of good, of course, not evil.